Hello, good morning. Got an email from Magda today. Just in case you're wondering how the how I do the emails, well, people contact me through my website, and then when they contact me, I take their email and I put it in a list, and I go through the list um, by the order that stuff came in. And the list is at the moment almost 70 pages long. Um, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't write an email if you want, because while it will be a while before I get to it, Whatever you're asking, even if the question that you're asking is going to be solved, hopefully by the time I get around to answering your email, um, somebody else will be asking that question. So it's always a good question. I also don't, I don't sort them. I answer everything that goes on the list. Um, and I don't really plan what I'm going to answer that day. I just go to the next one on the list. So sometimes it might seem that I'm answering similar questions and that's just kind of like the luck of it. All right, so this one's from Magda. My name is Magda, I'm from Germany, and I found your channel a few weeks ago. Um, and blah, 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 blah. I'm 21 years old, I've suffered with mental health problems since I was 16, but somehow managed to graduate and go to university, however I did spend five months in the hospital this year due to depression, trauma, and anorexia. I gained enough weight to return to uni last month. I found your videos to be very helpful. Um, your, annex, your explanation is anorexia to response to energy deficit if you have the genetic predisposition. I think my grandma also has an eating disorder, so I could have the genetics right. Um, we discussed, okay, so talking to my, her mum, she came up with this question. If the eat less, move more thing is a response to what the brain perceives as a famine, and all the brain thinks about is to leave the current place and get to another place, and why would, there would so, so that there would be food. Um, why is it still so hard to eat if there is food put in front of you? I mean, this is pretty much showing the brain, look, there is food, we're not in a famine, go eat. Why do you need to be forced to eat the food that deep down you wanted to eat for years, but never allowed yourself, even if you would have had it? Apart from that, everything does perfectly line up like the, um, with what the brain does on malnutrition or the OCD behaviors and focusing on food. But it doesn't really make sense to me that I couldn't eat, not, um, or even though I wanted to eat so badly. I don't know if that's understandable. That's why I want to say perfectly understandable. Yeah. So, well, this is the way I see it, right? So, yeah, it makes sense that when an animal or a mammal or a human needs to migrate, the brain goes like, Meh, eating is a waste of time. You don't want to waste time. It's not so much that the brain's like, eating is a waste of time. It's more like, because when human famine would have been a problem when famine would have been a huge problem for humans and we didn't have stuff like refrigerators and things like that. Finding food, like finding food would have been a big deal. And so every time you wanted to eat, somebody would have to go and hunt for that food, which takes a load of time and a load of energy. And so what the brain is doing is it's discouraging that. It's saying like, you haven't got the time to go and hunt for food. Mm -mm -mm. You've just got to move, you've got to get out, because if you get out, where are you going to? There'll be loads of food and you won't have to, you know, like, it'll be worth hunting for food then. But it's not worth hunting for food around here because there's not enough food in this environment to make it worth your while and you'll die trying, right? So that's what the aversion to eating food comes from. Now, why then, when, as Magda said, when you're in recovery, why is it so difficult to eat? And... I think that the reason for this is say that, say if it were, you're a human and it's thousands, thousands, thousands of years ago and there's a famine situation, um, go into energy deficit and then everybody is a tribe, you all decide to migrate and off you go and you migrate. Well, first of all, that whole process would be weeks, maybe months, probably if it was more than a month or so, bad things would happen to you and your tribe. If you hadn't found the food source, if you hadn't migrated successfully in that sort of time, bad things would start to happen. I'm sorry, curtains. So this response, this migration response, was never designed to last for years and years and years and years like it does when we go into energy deficit now. And when I say we, I mean pe we people with the genetic predisposition for an eating disorder. What happens when we go into energy deficit now is that there's no natural shut-off point. There's no end... And when I say natural shelter point, I mean like A, end to the famine, or B, you die. <laughs> Pretty natural shut off point, the second one, isn't it? So that doesn't happen now. The famine doesn't end because there's not actually a famine. It's a cultural thing. <laughs> That's not stopping. And you don't, you know, none of us, not well, not people do die from anorexia, but it's the majority of us don't not eat enough because food is around us 
to die or people don't allow us to get put in treatment or whatever. So what happens though as a result of that is that we have an eating disorder for years and years and years and then what happens is these entrenched behaviors start to come. Now anything that you do for a prolonged period of time over and over and over your brain learns right and so if you think about it's a different deal if your brain has that fear response to food with that fear response being like you shouldn't eat you gotta move you don't want to stop and eat that's a different deal if your brain's doing that for a couple of weeks and then it's not that hardwired and then you find a big food source and everybody in your tribe starts stuffing their faces it would be way easier to eat right and if you imagine when you maybe were right at the beginning of your eating disorder and you probably didn't even know that you had an eating disorder if you imagine those first couple of weeks if you'd started if you'd stopped the dieting if you'd stopped the restriction if you'd stopped the over exercise whatever it was that was really dragging you in and you'd started eating maybe like even less than a month into your eating disorder it would have been a completely different story wouldn't it i know i would have i know that it would have been way easier if i'd even known what was coming and i'd just been like you know what i'm just going to make myself eat it would have been way easier the reason that it's not so easy way down the line is because by that time your brain has got years and years and years of you having and following through with a fear reaction to food so every time, say for example, someone brings a packet of crisps up and you go, I'm not gonna eat those. Every time your action is to not eat the crisps, your brain learns that crisps are something to be scared of. They must be something to be scared of because you were scared of them and you didn't eat them. And think about how many times over the years your brain has had that reaction and you have taken the action to confirm that yes, food is something to be feared. So by the time most of us get round to recovery, years and years in, We've, our brains have got so much data to support the idea that food is to be feared that it's really difficult to get over that fear. That fear response is really huge. And so that is why I think that what was designed to be a pretty intelligent response to famine turns into something else altogether when it lasts for years and years and years. Because um, initially, this migrate response wasn't supposed to last years and years and years. There's no animals that migrate for years. <laughs> well, we do that when we have anorexia and it becomes, boom, the fear becomes hardwired. That's why it's so difficult to eat. That was a really smart question, Magda. I hope that that helps um, answer that for you and your mum.